is another find. I got this for $5 at a yard sale. It came in a box. They did not have the top of the box, and it was also very dirty. I made a video showing what to look for when you go to a yard sale. Now I'm going to show the same sewing machine, how to thread it, how to use the bobbin winder, and I have not been able to find the manual for the sewing machine. So we're going to wing it. And I was sewing on it earlier today, and I ran out of bobbin thread. Oh, first of all, this is the light. The light will be very helpful. Because then we can see down here. And I'm just going to go like this. See that little thing comes out? And just pull that right out. There's your bobbin. I guess it still does have something on it. Well, we're just going to take that off so that we have all... You always want to have the same thread on the top and the bottom. So you want to use this thread for both. Okay, now let's see. I've never threaded, I've never used the bobbin on this. So I'm going to have to figure out how it's done. And it's usually something like that. Stick it through like there. Let's see. There we go. Okay, it's not hitting. Oh, it's burning. I can smell it. Okay, so it's too tight. Maybe this is not the bobbin that goes in there. Oh, look at this. There is a little ridge on this. A little thing. And I think this fits into there. So you have to have that fitted in there. Oh, I just clicked. We're going to try it again. Okay, look at that. So, on this sewing machine, we're going to do this again, and I can't see. Okay, and I'm going to hold on to this, and that little groove in the bobbin. Okay, I have to look again. Let's see, where was it? Okay, there's the groove in the bobbin right there. And it has to fit into that groove. Why the heck did I take it off? Because now I can't get it back on. Because it clicked into place. Oh my goodness. Because I can't see either. Oh, well, maybe we... Okay, let me see if I can do it again. Because it should not be very hard to do. Okay, I'm going to turn it over. Maybe I can get the other side to pop in. Because uh, it right now, it smells like a melted belt. Because it was too tight. Because Okay, there. I think it just went. Nope, it didn't. It's too loose. I don't think I've ever had one where it popped in like that. Okay, there's the part where it pops in. Oh my goodness. Okay, that went very easily in there there. I did not have to push it really hard. It just slipped right in, which means it's right. And now it's easily turning. Okay, we don't have this on right because the thread is loose. Um, so it's not this one. 
Now remember, I don't have the manual, and this is a, a, a sewing machine I just barely got. So we're gonna flip it this, now see I'm doing it backwards. It's gotta go this way. Okay, and then down here, there's this little thing, and that's what's gonna wind that bobbin up. I think I have it right now. See right there? It's okay, it stopped winding. Okay, start it again. And it's just that easy. So you went we went from here to here. And usually anything down here is for the bobbin winding. And I missed that. A lot of sewing machines you can figure it out just by trial and error. The secret is nothing is hard. This, these are machines that just, everything runs smoothly, everything goes together, and you should never have to force anything. And you can see that's filling up. In a second, it's gonna pop off because it'll be full. See that? That's filled up. pair of scissors to cut this off. Oh wow, it looks like I need some thread too, which is behind me, sorry. Oh boy. I buy thread. I use a dual duty Coats and Clark and it's strong. You cannot break it with your hands very easily, which means when you sew something, it's going to stay. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, put this bobbin in. This is just like a Singer, I think, or a Sears Kenmore. So you're going to pull it up like that. It's done. Then you're going to grab that. Make sure this is up, and it's going to click right in. Yep, that's what, that's all that holds it. Okay, now we're going to thread it. It goes from here to here. Here. Okay, and then it's going to go down, and then uh, down under this. I hope, maybe it's supposed to go through that. I should have looked closer when I uh, before I undid it. But as we, as I've done before in other sewing machine videos, we're going to find out really quick if it's right because it won't work if it's not. It won't sew a nice neat seam. And then there's a piece down here that this clicks in. And just make sure you don't get that thread caught so you want to kind of hold it tight. That's also a pretty neat little clever thing that the light's in. I've not seen a sewing machine that has a neat, clever little thing. So you're going to make sure your needle's up and your fingers aren't under it. And then, of course, we're going to thread another needle, maybe. Hmm, maybe not, because I can't see. Okay, look at that. Okay, then you're going to turn this to grab your uh, your bottom thread. There it is. Looped around and grabbed it. Okay, now we need a piece of fabric, which I don't have. Oh, right here. Oh, I should have a new one, but yeah, I need to get a new one so that we can see the stitching on that. And I save pieces just for this. This is, I mean, looking at this machine, it has zigzag. This is an old machine. It's a Model 160 Super Deluxe Zigzag Machine, which means I cannot figure out why I can't find it. Right here, this says darn, this says so. I mean, the stuff this thing can do, and it, it's made in Japan. 
And so I don't really know what that means, but it seems to be a very, very good machine. But it's, of course, it's still dirty. This was also covered in uh, just dirt. So now we're going to see if everything is threaded right. And this needle, you can see, is offset because this is a zigzag machine. And I'm not going to show you today how to do this because I haven't messed with it. So for today, we're just going to do a straight stitch. Make sure your, your pressure thing is down. There's a little lever back here that you push and pull. If it, and then that helps feed your... your um, Okay, now let's look at that perfect stitching on a $5 machine. I just had to clean it up. Um, this machine was actually threaded when I got it. Um, this, I put a little dot there so I know right where this is in case somebody messes with the tension. This, oops, let's lift that up. This has something to do with this zigzag thing. This is your reverse. You push it to go backwards. Which is cool. Which is very nice. Because when you get to the end of a row, you want to go backwards to tie in your seam. Um, I think this is the stitch length. But of course, I don't really know. So let's try it. Yep, that's the stitch length. See how big it got? So four is a very long stitch. And we'll go back to two and a half. Um, usually nowadays, a six is a, um, a basting stitch. And then you usually use, what, what was this, a two and a half on here? And if I, if I actually end up using these or this, I will have to make another video and that'll be part two because I have you I just use this for straight sewing. And hope you enjoyed this video. Hope I gave you a little bit of information and have fun sewing. Voila!